you know, as, as far as international trade. So what are your thoughts on what's happening out east with all this formation of the, the Belt and Road and things like that? Is there some type of shift taking place or has it already occurred? There is a shift, uh, but it's going to be it's going to take a lot longer than 10 years. I mean, people often think that these sorts of things happen in a decade. They don't, but they might happen in three decades. So, um, I mean, the biggest one of the biggest mistakes America ever made was at the Bretton Woods Agreement, rather than agreeing to Keynes's proposal of introducing an international currency called the Bancor, which was going to be created by the IMF proportional to the size of different national economies, and then a fixed exchange rates. But if you wanted to devalue, you'd have to go and apply to the IMF, and they could give you a loan in Bancors. But surface nations would be required to spend the money that they got, and there'd be aid uh, built into the bank core system as well. America opposed all that. They wanted the other big, tough American greenback to be the reserve currency. Well, that's pretty much what set you guys up for a trade deficit. Mm. Everybody wants your dollars, mm. okay? There's huge demand for your dollars because you need them for international trade, which over time means that your prices get to be more expensive than they should be because your currency is overvalued. And therefore, you end up as one of many, many factors leading to the deindustrialization of America and the election of the man whose name I will not mention, unless you insist. <laughs> uh, so so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the great problem. And because you have this trade, huge trade deficit, because your transnational corporations are locating offshore and exploiting national differences as well, over time, the American economy is growing certainly a lot slower than East Asia in general. And China wants to get even for the uh, for the opium wars, which of course were wars fought by the British and the Americans to force China to continue accepting exports of, of opium, particularly from England mm -hmm. uh, via India. Um, so the, there's, a, there's a strong historical emphasis behind the Chinese wanting to restore the level of, of uh, credibility and status they had before the 19th century colonial period. Um, I think in maybe 40 or 50 years time, there'll be enough strengthen that rebalancing that America can no longer justify being the sole source of international reserves. But I think for at least the next decade, they're going to get away with it. All right. So you're saying that the next decade, the dollar or the Federal Reserve notes should still be good to use international trade wise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the only way to have any, any precipitous fall would be if you have a chronic trade deficit uh, where you um, China gets to be so much more important. People are willing to accept payment in yuan. Uh, rather than wanting payment in American dollars, uh, then then you might start getting a, 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 a dual global currency situation, and then you might see some big shifts away. And you know, if only we'd go back to what Keynes wanted back in 1942 these, or 44, these conversations wouldn't be so necessary now. All right, good point there. Now, 